Hello humans, my name is Kay here, AI Overload and Stability AI just released their brand new AI model called Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large, which is their biggest and most powerful model to date, with 8 billion parameters closely following the release of Flux. And speaking of Flux, is Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large finally the Flux killer? Well maybe, and I'll explain why later. But in this video I'm gonna showcase this new Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large, see how it performs compared to Flux, talk about the pros and cons, and at the end I will give you my own opinion about this model and the future of open source text to image AI models. So sit back, relax, and let's go. Okay, so to install a new Stable Diffusion 3.5, you can either use the automatic installer that is available for my Patreon supporters, both for local install and run pod, or you can just follow the manual installation guide that is available in the description down below. I'm not gonna spend any more time on Config UI installation, I've already done multiple videos on that, I really just want to get to the meat of the video. Also on Patreon I prepared a simple all-in-one workflow for Stable Diffusion 3.5, kinda like I did with my previous video on my ultimate all-in-one workflow version 1 for Flux, so if you haven't seen the video I highly recommend that you do. Oh and also I know that a lot of people are waiting for the version 2 of the ultimate all-in-one Flux workflow and it's coming very soon so stick around for the release. Alright then, so that being said, let's begin. So what makes this Stable Diffusion 3.5 so special? Well first as I said previously, it is an 8 billion parameters model, which is very close to the 12 billion parameters to the Flux model that we got only a few months ago, meaning that when it comes to image generation and the quality of the image generated, it should be very very close to what we can get on Flux, with also a high emphasis of prompt adherence. So basically how close the model follows the prompt, which was basically the biggest quality for the Flux model. And indeed, if I try to generate an image like a high resolution close-up photography of a blonde woman real estate agent with blue eyes, red lipstick, wearing an orange suit with diamond earrings, sitting on a chair, if now I try to generate this image, we get exactly that. Blonde woman, real estate agent, blue eyes, red lipstick, diamond earrings, orange suit, sitting on a chair in our office. And that is really the whole point of using models like that, because if the model can perfectly replicate your prompt, you can pretty much generate anything you want. But I know exactly what you're gonna say. Okay, but that's good and all, but I'm sure the Flux can do it better, since it is a bigger model. And yes, you're right, because if I indeed put the same prompt and use the Flux model, and I generate an image, well, we get something like this. The exact same type of image that very closely follow the prompts, and Flux, compared to the 3.5, actually actually has a better quality. Like this is the 3.5 and this is Flux. So yeah, I mean in this case, bigger model means better quality, at least when it comes to photorealistic images. However, this is not where Stability AI wants this model to shine, since they know that they cannot compare with Flux, because their biggest strength has always been the fact that you can easily fine tune the model to meet your specific needs. And that is something we unfortunately cannot get with Flux. Now this is something that I haven't talked about in my previous videos, but you need to know that Flux released by Black Forest Labs was actually a distilled model. And basically distilled means that it was optimized to run faster and better, but because of that process, it makes fine-tuning the model almost impossible. Which is why we haven't seen as of right now any new model of Flux. That is because fine-tuning that model is pretty much impossible. Now yes, you can train a LoRa, you can use Dreambooth to train a concept or a style or a face, but fine-tuning an entire model like we did with Stable Diffusion Excel or Stable Diffusion 1.5 to make the actual model much much better and completely different, that is unfortunately impossible. And that is where Stability AI usually shines with their models, in the fact that even if the base model is not that good, the community can always make it much much better by fine-tuning the model, merging those models together to create even better models. I mean the images that you can see right here are all the images that you can generate with some fine-tuned versions of the 1.5 version. So imagine what could be possible once the community fine-tuned the 3.5 model. Okay, so another good pros for this model compared to Flux is that since the model is a little bit smaller than Flux, it is not only faster to generate an image, but it is also lighter on your VRAM. Now right now I'm using like the unoptimized version of the model and it is using a lot of VRAM, but once we get some GGUI versions and it is like more optimized, this model should run way faster and use less VRAM than Flux. So for those of you who have a weak GPU with not a lot of VRAM, well this is definitely a good point for you. 
Now another pros of the model, since this is not a distilled model, all the things like negative prompt and CFG scale can work right out of the box. Now we still don't know exactly how to prompt them correctly, so we still need to learn how to do that, but in theory, just like other stable diffusion models, you can basically put in a negative prompt what you don't want to see in the image, and it should in theory respect your wishes and not put that thing into your image. So let's say that for example I don't want the diamond necklace, I can just put diamond necklace in the negative prompt and now if I click generate and as you can see in the next image there is no diamond necklace and yet everything else that I put into the prompt is still there in the image. Blonde hair, blue eyes, red lipstick, diamond earring, orange suit, sitting on a chair in our office, everything is present in the image. So that is really just fantastic. And of course same thing with the CFG scale. Now with the 3.5 if you increase that you should have a better anatomy but if you plan on creating stylized images then you should definitely decrease that amount to something like maybe 2.5 and you should get like more original and artistic looking images. And speaking of style and artistic images, this is the next pros for this 3.5 large model. The fact that it actually has a lot more styles built in compared to Flux. Because one of the weaknesses of Flux is the fact that if you wanted to have something like a painting in a very particular style, well this is something that you cannot do. So like for example if I ask for an illustration of a woman in a space helmet with the 3.5, you can get some pretty decent looking images. Whereas if you use the same prompt in Flux, we might get something a little bit more generic. Still looks good, but it's a little bit more generic. And you will see that style everywhere anytime that you ask for an illustration. And you can get even better images and more artistic looking images if you, for example, decrease that CFG scale to something like 2.5, for example, where you can get images like this. Something that will be very, very difficult to get inside the Flux base model. And it becomes even more apparent once you start asking for something like an abstract painting where you get something like this, because this is definitely the type of images that you will not be able to generate inside of Flux, at least with the base model. because. If you try, as you can see no matter what you do, you will still get back to that very generic style, that very same illustration style for some reason, whereas the 3.5 can generate a huge variety, a huge range of images in completely different styles. And this is really a huge plus, like I personally really really like this image. And sure you might be able to do the same thing with Flux, with some LoRa training, but the fact that you can do this inside the 3.5 base model without any training is really 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 cool and speaking of huge variety huge range um i'm sure that a lot of people will be asking for this so so let me just say it outright yes the 3.5 is actually an uncensored model yeah i'm not kidding compared to the 3.0 which was the most censored model i have ever seen you can actually generate no safer work images maybe not hardcore but definitely good enough that you can start from there especially if you do some further fine-tuning. Obviously I'm not gonna show this on YouTube, you can do it yourself, you can try it out yourself, but it's actually even more uncensored than Flux. So once again a very very good point for the 3.5. And lastly one of the best pros for this model is the fact that they basically reviewed their commercial license, where now basically if you don't make more than 1 million dollars annually in revenue, this model is basically free to use. So yeah that's that's really really generous and that's really really cool. Alright so now let's Let's talk about the cons of the model and to be honest there aren't a lot of them which is really really good but there are a few of them. The first and probably the biggest con is the fact that just like the 3.0 the hands and anatomy is still not good. So like for example if I write something like woman showing her hands to the camera if not I try to generate the image and as you can see we get something like this where basically not all the fingers are rendered correctly. Maybe because my CUG scale is a little low so let me just maybe increase that to 5 maybe and try again. So yeah there we go still not great. One hand is okay when the other one is kind of like they're sharing the same thumb and one finger is missing on the side whereas if you try the same prompt with flux so there you go as you can see much better hands still not perfect but still better compared to the 3.5 now in terms of like the overall anatomy and dynamic posing it's 
okay. Plux is still much better, but it's definitely much better than the 3.0. However, you always kind of have to sacrifice between anatomy and quality of the image. Usually when the CRG scale is higher, the anatomy will be better, but the image will be a little bit more like, you know, like overblown. But if you decrease that to something like 2.0, for example, and you try again, you will see that the image is much better now, at least color wise. But in terms of anatomy, it is worse than before. So you always kind of have to play a little bit with the parameters, try to find like maybe your sweet spot, try to determine which one works the best for you and for the image that you try to generate. But you can still generate some pretty okay looking images even from the base model but flux is definitely still better at general anatomy and general image quality compared to the 3.5 so maybe this is something that could be solved with further fine tuning maybe eventually i don't know but what you can see is definitely the difference between those two base models and next and final con for this model which is something that is kind of annoying is the fact that you cannot generate any image that is more than one megapixel in size. So like for example if I say something like a beautiful woman drinking coffee in a busy bar and I want like a 16 by 9 ratio type image so I'm just going to increase the width to something like 1792. Now if I click generate with flux I get something like this a nice beautiful looking image very very nice very very cool but now if i take this same prompt and i use the 3.5 large with the same resolution if now i click generate you get whatever this atrocity is with a bunch of like weird pixels around the image with an overall horrible quality and that is because as it is written here the resolution should be around one megapixel with the width and height as a multiple of 64. Now we got the multiple of 64 right here, but the resolution is definitely above one megapixel. So if you want to generate those types of 16 by 9 ratio image, well, in that case, you will have to decrease the resolution 1280 to 768. And now if we try again, you will see that now it should work fine. And there you go. So it is kind of annoying that you cannot generate images with higher resolution of over one megapixel, but you may still use some upscaling techniques to re-add some of that lost details and resolution but it is just a bummer that compared to flux where you can just generate an image of high resolution from the get-go the 3.5 cannot do it as easily but yeah i mean other than that this model is actually really really good it can generate some decent looking images in a variety of different styles and since it is a base model that is not distilled, it should be much easier and better to train compared to Flux. And even though the anatomy of the hands and the body is still left to be desired, it's still nonetheless a very powerful model. Now, that being said, what is my personal opinion about the release of this model? So I'm, I'm gonna tell to you right now, I think this model, despite all the good and bad things, I think this model is okay. It is a model that is really good, but at the same time, it doesn't blow me away. Like this is the type of model that should have been released in June when the 3.0 was released instead. But even if it did, even if it did release in June, I'm still not sure that I would be that impressed by it. Now, in the meantime, we got the release of Flux that put a huge fire under Stability AI's ass to push them to release a better model than the one ones they made in June following the fiasco of the 3.0 and the reception of the community. Now don't get me wrong, it is still a very very good model, even though obviously an 8 billion parameter will not be as good as a 12 billion parameter model. If the community can find the strength to fine tune that model further, we might indeed have on our hands the future Flux Killer, which is great, right? But that is only if you assume that Black Forest Labs, the creator of the Flux model, do not release anything in the meantime. Because yeah, sure, the Flux 1 dev model is a distilled model, so you cannot fine-tune it correctly, at least compared to other stable diffusion models. But as of right now, Black Forest Labs is working on more powerful models than the Flux 1 dev. They even have a 1.1 Pro model available right now. So who's to say that in a few weeks or in a few months, they decide to release a Flux 1.0 dev model that is undistilled to the public with maybe a better commercial license? Because if they 
it did that, all Stability AI plans will fall apart. And I gotta tell you, the only reason why Stability AI is still here is because there aren't any competition. And we didn't have any competition to the Stable Diffusion model until Flux came along. And yes, I know it is a distilled model, I know that it is not as flexible, the 3.5 that was released is technically more flexible and has a better future for the community compared to Flux. And I'm sure that once again, if the community start fine-tuning those models, we can truly create some amazing stuff. However, once again, it is assuming that Black Forest Labs does not release anything in the meantime. Because if they do, I'm not sure what else we're supposed to do. And I don't think that we will stay on the 3.5 if we get another Flux model, especially if it is an undistilled version. Now, of course, all of this is just wishful thinking. I don't know any of the ins and outs of the in the behind the scenes industry. So I'm just talking about someone who is passionate about AI image models and text to image AI generation, especially open source ones. And since I don't know which model the community will choose to focus on, I don't know if I'm gonna make more videos about the 3.5 for now. I think that until I have confirmation that the community definitely chose the 3.5, I will still keep making videos about the Flux model because they have the ultimate only one Flux workflow v2 coming soon, as well as a video about LoRa training for Flux. But if I see that people are interested in a video about training the 3.5, LoRa or fine tuning, then I might start making videos on that model very soon. So it's kind of up to you. Let me know in the comments down below which videos you want to see on this channel and I will try my best to fulfill that wish, I guess. So yeah, there you go. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think of this model. Am I right? Am I wrong? Are you gonna use it? Are you gonna try it? So definitely let me know. Try it out yourself and have some fun. And there we are with folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the reason why I'm able to make these videos, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.